because you could just play defense with this Garner pick right now here for KT. Plus, knocking down a Poppy, dragging her away, you know, punishing a Galio engage. There's so many things that Skarner could do very well around that. But my favorite part of this draft for T1 is the Galio follow-up. Faker has been by far and away the best Galio player this season. He's had some amazing taunt plays. He had a five-man taunt in a really critical matchup. They have now, yeah, you didn't get the rise, but you have a lot of power around early skirmishing with this Sivir. Taunts are going to be strong. Knockups are going to be strong. You can, of course, add some extra shielding. And I think that both wild KT are going to be tough, but play defensively. Yeah, let's see how it goes. We hop under the rift here for game number one of the Telecom War. I hope you guys could hear the drum. Joe Mars was really, uh, really giving it all he had uh, in that fan chant. Oh, Pax Siver as well for Gumiyushi. Man, this guy's a savant. I, uh, I, I definitely got um, got my Pax Siver skin from Pax. 100%. Definitely went there. <laughs> Pax East. Um, what was it like? 2011, 2012, something like that. Super long time ago. Yeah, I was definitely there and um, and got it myself. Definitely wasn't a purchase afterwards or anything like that. Would never do something like that. Ghost uh, will be the summoner spell of choice here for Gumi UC. And when you have the Ghost plus Exhaust, and now Carrier will take heal, so it's not like he's healless actually, he just has it in a different place. Yep. I think having the Ghost here is way more valuable than having... The trade-off is that your Yumi does not have an Ignite, because you can always still have the uh, heal that she picked up here. But I think it's way more valuable, and it clearly shows that T1 want to punish this lane, dive this lane, be extremely aggressive here. And, and also just means that you will be able to keep up with uh, with aiming as well, because you get so much movement speed just by being Zeri and pressing your R button. That Gumiushi, when he uses Fleet of Foot as well as uh, that Ghost, plus on the hunt, like, you're not catching up with that Ziva. I, I just don't think you're going to win uh, when it comes to the uh, movement speed advantage. And every time the uh, Ziva ult gets popped, like, that's when you have to be super careful as the uh, Zeri in these... Trying to set up kills for the Zeri early is a very tricky thing, but Cause is looking for it. Yeah, and Life is trying to bait them in as well. Extendo Beam doesn't exactly hit the mark. Flash out from Life just to deny the first blood as Cause is wrapping around. we got Alcove Gaming through here. As that's a phenomenal spell shield, and Faker had teleported in to save his bottom lane. They knew how important this was going to be as Justice Punch comes down. There's a three-man taunt from Faker, and he picks up life and first blood. Extendo Beam will do nothing, and KT just lose a member. Faker saves the day. Similar to Kled. You know, he yells charge. You know exactly what you're supposed to do. It's why Sivir is fantastic in solo queue, everyone. You just press your R button, and everyone knows it's fighting time. Well, it's like having a Shirelius before you would normally have that. You don't even have to spend the gold to get it. Um, there's also another way to look at it is Vikla will try to come over here and contest, but there is just no way. Also, they don't sacrifice any farm for Guma. He's here. Zeri on the other side, which is a champion that normally gets a lot of value if it's left in the bottom lane while the Herald is being contested. She's not there. She doesn't get any farm there. Whereas, guess who's giving it up? Okay, hold on. Yeah, Cuz is going to be in the area. Three versus two, theoretically, even if we can only see a... Oh, okay, never mind. Make it four versus two. So yeah. this is going to be guaranteed plates. Zayas and Gumiushi both going to be picking them up here. Look this at how lane late. swap for acceleration is fantastic for T1. And terrible for aiming. He's just now getting back to the lane. And meanwhile, Guma's getting all these plates. Guess who's giving up the CS? It's Faker, by the way. He gave him the mid CS. He's like, you can have it. I'm not going to need those early items. I'm just a CC bot this game. I'm just going to play utility. And Faker, once again, big brain plays here. Now he's actually getting free landing done as they get a second charge. And Zeri, yeah, she'll get some plates down here, but this is such an accelerated saver. The Ooh, exchange is not fair. Yeah, T1 are going to back away. The threat of the Emperor's Divide is going to be a little bit much. There's the flash from Kuz. Gets the flash out of Zeus in the end. Crystalline Exoskeleton, not quite enough extra movement speed there. And he did take X-Flash, which is dis er, re-enabled, rather, no longer disabled this in this exchange. But now Rascal, not as safe as he was before. There's a lot of mid-game power here now in this T1 composition. Is X-Flash going to be used here? Zayas has no idea. Yeah, so many wards, but it's going to seem a little bit too late here. Zayas is going to get knocked up by the Wild Growth pretty nicely. The stun should come through. The Nara is on to three, but I have a feeling Zayas is still going to die as he will get snipped down. Rascal secures that kill. That is going to be one over to KT to even out that scoreline, but the money damage 
is already there for T1. I think, don't think Zayas is too upset about the situation. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's still a small win here for KT, all things considered. A lot of resources had to be given. And also knows Zeri is taking a gromp right now um, because she's like, I don't know oh, no. where Poppy is. And uh, he does come over here once he realizes, okay, she's definitely not there. But he was, of course, left out to dry by life, who had to be topside for that play. And if Poppy dives him, he dies. So there's all these trade-offs, right? Like, he doesn't know that he could have actually farmed safely here. But when he don't, doesn't know where owner is, he just has to back away. Well, owner is now going to be uh, located in the river. I don't think he was spotted there by KT. But KT underneath their turret is going to be okay for the moment. We do have to remember that, you know, Zeri is even on CS. Um, not even on plates, like you were talking about. So there is still a big lead when it comes to money for Gumiyushi. Yeah, look at that item that just came through. Though. Yeah, that is uh, there this stage. It's a big one. That's also a very aggressive choice, right? Uh, this is Gumiyushi saying, I do not need any sort of repositioning tool whatsoever. My team is going to be here to back me up, and it's going to be A-OK. -okay. I can just run really fast, and it'll yeah. be fine. I think with his ghost, when you don't know where Kuz is, you obviously could push this around a little bit further. Yeah, Kuz is going to impale here. His own is going to get pushed back. Can't actually get through here as he does smite for a bit of extra health, but it's not going to save him. And that's Zeri picking up a kill, ladies and gentlemen. That was so extremely well played from Kuz. Both iterations of that exchange. The first part, obviously, where he's able to force out Guma's summoners. And the second part, where he sticks around here, trades against a Poppy, has the setup here with Vikla. And KT know their win conditions so well here, but also Kuz really just matching the tempo of owner so incredible is that she hasn't been able to team fight yet. We had an 11, 12 minute first Drake here and second Drake has, you know, hasn't even spawned yet. So Guma not getting that much value out of this early Kraken Slayer because KT got a pick without him even being there because they set up a dive there on the bottom side. And as a result, you know, I'm not saying that Sivir doesn't scale because we've had this conversation already. Like she can be very strong later on, but KT keep getting small wins on the map here around objectives like the second Rift Herald that they're picking up, the Drake of buffering they already have. So they have a single five minute of extra time bought here. Um, and T1, yeah, you can grab this turret, but just feels like the team fighting that T1 want to take, KT have just completely been able to successfully avoid. Yeah, if they were going to trade it for this bottom turret, um, it would have been fine. But Rascal actually able to walk his way down there, still has his teleport available. Um, Faker not with his does mean Oh, well, Vikla also without his as well, so no teleport advantage on either side. But Rascal does manage to get down there, saves that turret for now, although it is on its last legs. Completely reworked here. See how powerful she does end up being later on. Don't want to underestimate what she could do. Is this going to be a dead turret? Yeah, and possibly a dead Rascal. But he is going to pull out the needlework. There's the ulti from Faker. That's just going to make sure that uh, Ona stays alive, as Rascal is demanding some respect here. We remember at the beginning of the season, Rascal was like, tanks are the best right now but I also really like Gwen. So he is on his carry of choice here, uh, if we can take what was said at the beginning of the season uh, as still truth now. Because he just sat under inner, and he was like, if you ever want to try to push this advantage any further, you're going to pay for it. And KT, you're just going to get the straight for free? Yeah. Uh oh this is a problem. Yeah, the team that has a lot of scaling is actually uh, now with the Drake advantage. It's going to be Infernal Soul as well. Oh my god. As if T1 start picking up dragons at this point in time, then the scaling problem is not going to be an issue whatsoever. Not even entirely sure whether it's that much of a problem. I think a lot of it comes down to execution, but we haven't seen any of it executed yet. As uh, KT certainly feeling like they're on the front foot, looking to now break down this outer turret in the mid lane. Yeah, going to take this one down with the next wave is the plan. They have a lot of wave clear here, obviously. And when you can see Azari freely walking at turrets like this, that's when you should be a little bit worried um, because she's just kind of freely getting money on the map, which should not be allowed to happen. Yeah. And she's, you know, she, it was not a free early game for her by any means. Yumi Yusi, but Baker? Yeah, possibly out of position here just a little bit as he's trying to get out. Teleport to come through from KT, looking to try and protect Rascal. But Vickler's going to have to make his way out of here. Faker's taking a long time to be taken down as Kuz definitely not wanting to use the Impale on just a lone Gargoyle. And T1, positional error as the flash forward from Kuz. He's looking for Gumiushi, but he's so incredibly fast. And Kuz is just going to get smacked into the wall. Oh my goodness, the Impale was so cute. And Kuz is going to make it to safety, but life is going to pay for his sins. Then immediately afterwards, he is going to fall down. It looked cute, but it did not work out for KT. As Vickler is going to have to flash, and Gumiushi is just straight up a raid boss. This was risky call from T1. If this fight goes even slightly better and aiming picks up two or three kills here in the extended trade, 
then the game might as well just be over, but it's still working out for T1. They're still pushing Vikla away. As you mentioned, he had to flash now, aiming, even though those health bars are low, he's not at the stage just yet with only an Immortal Shield Bow, where he feels comfortable to continue the fight, even with Cleanse and Flash available. Guma really getting value out of the Kraken Slayer PD this time around. Hits the two item spike, which is why T1 wanted to force a fight here, because there was no other objective. The second Drake had already gone over. We've already gone through second Herald, etc. But Faker had that one rogue ward, and he was like, I'm going to teleport to this. We're going to actually get the Sivir. He has to get anywhere near uh, Grimyushi. Is, uh, KT going for an early Baron here. It's been alive for 50 seconds, and T1 have absolutely no vision oh, man. T1 of this T1, area. And by the time they realize it's very late here, Faker is coming over the wall potentially with this Blast Cone. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's taking a long time. And KT are just going to back away. They opt out of the situation entirely. And I don't even think T1 knew, because I don't think they got no, uh, they never in the pit. They never were able to hard confirm, but I think they sussed it out, and they were like, okay, glad we checked. And I think by this point, with KT not showing for so long, they were like, ooh, they probably started it and just barely walked away. And they didn't get to see exactly when, but I think T1 definitely have the right idea here. As you look at the gold across the board here, still a 500 lead for the Sivir. 1,200 here for Zayas has actually gotten so much value around the map here, but... Again, that gold isn't going to matter unless T1 can win these upcoming fights. And we still haven't seen a traditional 5v5 here with Guma. We saw him win one when Faker was just dead at the start. So let's see how this fight looks because it's definitely one that both teams absolutely want to fight over. Soul Point on the line here for KT, an infernal Soul Point. Yeah. And sometimes it feels okay giving away Drakes if you feel like your scaling's all right. But when it's Infernals and you're giving them to this T1 composition, that doesn't feel good at all. Zayas on the flank doesn't exactly have a huge Narbar. There's a big taunt onto two members. Emperor's Divide comes down, but it's not going to save the Azir. Aiming, trying to get autos through as Ona has to flash to get himself out of the way. But this Zeri, she cannot get in range to fight. And the Drake is going to go over to T1, plus they win the battle. House flies forward. Aiming's going to get slowed down here. And Zayas is not done yet. Oh, that boomerang damage was just massive. And Aiming's trying to run away, and he will be able to do so. T1, often with low health bars, but always winning these team fights. Yeah, and up here is once again, we're going to see Cuz looking for top side pick. Yeah, him and life, I don't think is going to be enough damage here as Cuz should be able to get an impale as he's looking to try and bring Faker back to Vikla. Owner's going to turn up as Faker decides that he wants to turn this fight around. Faker is likely to fall down here, but no, actually creates enough distance. The rest of T1 turn up to save their mid laner as Cuz is now limping away again. Gumiushi deals with that with a ricochet. In goes Vikla. Faker just completely denies the Azir play, and now it's the big old Nar in the front line to clean up shop. Extendo Beam flying forward, but it's once again just not going to be enough damage, and Faker just baits all of KT. This was such a knife's edge play for both teams, but I thought this game was going to be decided on, you know, a soul point fight, maybe a Baron. KT said, no, we're just going to fight for this. We're going to force this on, on the top side as, oh, no, Amy. Amy. He is able to Jet Set Radio Future, tries to ulti this one, but he will get snared up with the Everfrost. Trying to keep himself alive here as uh, Faker and a cat, not exactly able to do it, but still Baron's going down, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter that uh, this kill wasn't able to be picked up because T1 now have a gigantic lead and so much pushing threat. Yeah, I, I really thought what was going to break the back in this game was going to be a huge objective fight. Now, KT looked for that pick onto Faker. They knew he was flashless from the last fight. Bit of a damage issue, like you said, and unfortunately, Vikla didn't have Emperor's Divide at the beginning of that fight. It was still on cooldown, so they're not able to lock Vikla. Oh, I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, that could be a decent time to stopwatch. That could be a decent time to, time to stopwatch, but no, Faker is not as scared as I am, as it turns out. Uh, he has plenty of courage and just waits for the absolutely perfect moment as the Zonyas is uh, completed as well. So he just trusts in he Zayas. He gets to do it again. Zayas rotates over so well, is blocking the rest of the team from following up to actually kill Faker with autos. Aiming is just not in position to blast him with his extendo beam or anything like that. And so Faker just knows. He's like, who hits me? Doesn't matter if I'm at one health. No one can actually get in there to damage me except a shuffling Air Vikla, who uh, I could just easily time my stopwatch to deny. Now he's got his Zonyas, so he could do it again. Yeah. This has just been such a great game for T1. I think KT played the early game very aggressively. It looked like it was disaster, but they handled the lane swap so well. And I thought, okay, we're going to a mid game. KT have a two Drake lead. It's anyone's to take, but just one over commitment top side and T1 punish. Now they're completely in control of this game. 7,000 gold the lead. Yeah.
Cuz now walking up past this ward that is about to expire. It does fall down there, but did get a lot of value. And Cuz can always help facilitate these picks as Hexflash did fly forward. Cuz not quite able to find anything here as Vikla with his Sun Disc. It's looking pretty ominous right there with that particular skin, but it is still a Sun Disc. Like they have throughout this game, and just and says good night to KT. I understand why Vikla is building Shadow Flame right now, as he just finishes as I, as I say those words. But he's hoping that he's going to have enough damage to kill Guma. Yes, he can't kill the cat, and he's definitely not going to kill the two Force of Natures in this game, or Galio, just by the nature of his kit, also has Merc Fred. So the build here for Vikla. Leaves a lot to be desired. Now, what would he have built? Otherwise, like he could have built the Andres, I suppose, to try to burn through the health bars of the Nar and the Galio. But T1, while they have a strong front line, their damage is extremely front-loaded in this Zipper, who's running at you and speeding the team up. So you don't get the time to actually get Leandre's burn done. So kind of a catch-22 problem here for Vikla, but it feels really bad yeah. into all the magic resistance that's already built here for T1 for the Gwen. Yeah, this is the thing. Like. Rascal went second item Void yeah. Staff. He kind of knew that it was going to be difficult to get through this squad. Azaeus, can he actually get over? Oh, decides to gnaw that wall instead. So Smalkov Gaming going to mean that uh, Rascal's going to be A-OK. -okay. Moves his way out. I like that Rascal is playing some side lanes, though. We're not going to have the Kwandong scenario where the uh, split push champion is chosen and then never split pushes. As, like, ships in the night, we do are going to have Cousin Faker backing away. As AS zooming forward, quite literally, because there is a Yumi there. Stendo Beam not going to do enough damage whatsoever. Three items have been hit for the Zeri, but no Infinity Edge just yet. As Rascal's dashing forward, he can actually uh, tank the ulti from uh, Owner if he isn't actually in the mist with him. He's going to move away that time around. But T1 still struggling to uh, knock down these turrets. Of course, Siva, notoriously short range, yeah. so it's uh, difficult to get the siege work. Scaling component of this isn't going to be as big of a problem unless they can win some really decisive team fights. It's Aeus. Um, live. Hello? Pop goes the, uh, the Lulu, I guess, as that is a nice ulti. Kuz gonna have to flash to get himself out of this one, but it's not going to save his life. Zayas with the hyper procs going to get there, and KT are just evaporating one after the other. Double kill for Zayas. Bikla is on zero health inside his base. And he's going to be taken out as well. Now it's Rascal against the world. And against the world, I might say that it's all right. But against T1 in this game, it is absolutely not. And this turret is going to fall down. T1 should claim game number one. And this Civic comp looking absolutely beautiful. 5-0 and 7 here, Guma, on the Civer. But I think a lot of this game was really about how his team might set him up. Baker and Zayas in particular. What a beautiful answer to the Zeri crafted here from T1. Yeah. Absolutely amazingly done, as they are going to try and kill life one last time, as Faker even survives, goes golden, and uh, will be able to take down the Nexus. T1 in pretty beautiful fa fashion behind Faker and...